try to lead my life as a life of compassion. And um, that's why I keep telling you guys, I'm praying for a Saul to Paul moment where um, all this radical and hateful thinking, there's something that happens that's, that shakes them up and they say, you know what? I'm Paul now. The Lord didn't change my name. Purposely random, purposely random. Hey, what's up, you guys? It's your girl, Angela Elise, and this is the podcast, Purposely Random, a podcast by Angela Elise, 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 Elise. And as you can tell, I am in my feelings. So there's not going to be a theme song. This is actually going to be another rant. It's actually an updated rant of my rants that I first had when uh, the rioting and looting first started in honor of George Floyd and his memory and wanting for there to be justice. So um, I wanted to update that because as I grow, as I learn, I want to make sure that you guys see that journey. And I want to give you guys information that I have as well. I think it's definitely important to start this conversation about people's ability to change and normalizing that conversation, normalizing change, normalizing becoming more informed and um, normalizing just because somebody felt the way even a day ago doesn't mean that they feel that way now because with more knowledge, there's power. Once we know justice, we can know peace. You feel me? Um, cool. So let's get into it. First, I want to preface this by saying that I put out a couple statements right after I made those videos about how I felt after seeing the riot that happened here and seeing how the media spun that, how the media interviewed the predator in this situation. And we've tried, we have tried the peaceful way. We have tried the silent way. We have tried, tried, and tried. But for some reason, people do not listen. Historically, historically, people do not listen. Government does not listen unless there's an uproar. And so here we are. After years and years and years and years of suffering, after years and years and years of having conversations, where are the arrests? Where are the trials? Where are the holding people accountable? Where is that? Yeah, you changed the name of this. Yeah, you got rid of this mascot. Yeah, you are hiring more black people. We want that and we want what we ask for. And not even just what we ask for. We really see we're we're asking you for police reform. But really, what we really, really need to ask for and what we deserve, undeniably deserve, is the whole daggone pie. We deserve everything, every justice, every equality, every, every, every. We deserve it. We put in the time. We put in the tears. And, oh, just because there's not a living white person that has owned a living black person does not mean that we are still not being oppressed today. We are. There are still effects financially, physically, mentally, economically, um, demographically, just because y'all didn't stop at, hey, here's that 40 acres in the mule. Sorry about that. You know, we shouldn't have held y'all captive. I mean, If y'all want to go back home to a home that you never really knew anymore, like, I guess we can do that. We'd be happy to do that. Um, But if you're going to stay, I mean, we're not going to treat you right. So it's up to you. We're going to put you in severe debt. We're going (laughs) to, man, yo, there's so much that, that has happened to Black people over the courses of history that's not okay that's not right that if any other race if you put the white a bunch of white people in the same position that we were in they would be guess what getting resources for mental health not in trump's america though because trump does not believe in mental health he's actually trying to cut cut funding 
Um, there's a lot that I feel. But the thing is, I don't want to just make it about race, but I definitely want to let's highlight that and then and then I want to get into the bigger ideas of what I've had there's still very much uh, some of the bigger ideas that I had over on my other rants but first let's get into race so you know systematic oppression um redlining now gentrification now um first you moved us to this place and now you're like, hey, let's actually go back over there and let's remodel it and let's put some coffee and some yoga and like, ain't nothing wrong with coffee and yoga, but it's like, but y'all pushed us out. And now you're trying to take it back and raise the rent and push people out. And push people out again. Because what was happening is y'all had your little neighborhoods and black people moving in. And then you said, oh, no, this is a bad area. Blacks are here. Let's go over here. But now over here is not that great. So now you want to come over here. And now you just want to have everything. You just want to conquer all over again. It's still in your blood, ain't it? It's still, <laughs> still in your blood. <sighs> the entitlement is real. Like, this is just crazy. Um, speaking of entitlement, I've been watching so many videos, maybe to my detriment of like just all these Karens and Kyles and, and Billy Bobs and, and Cheyennes and they're just out here being so racist. Um, they're being overseers because they're little deputies of the police and they're like, well, what you doing? Where's your, where's your, where's your ID? And, and where's your paper? Where's, why don't you say, where's my freedom papers? Call a spade a spade. Where's your freedom papers? You ain't supposed to be here, boy. Like, why don't you just say that? Because that's really what you want to say. That's really how you feel inside of your chest. Thinking that you're my overseer, thinking that you still rule over me. No, 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 no. You're not. That's not the narrative, honey. What you're not going to do is keep on trying to try me. Because we see your agenda. Your agenda is to get us killed off. But it's not working. God bless the person that's decided to put a camera in each cell phone. Because now we got y'all, bro. We got you on tape. And what kills us about George Floyd and all these other things is there's tape evidence now. There's tape evidence now, and you're, the, the, the government's still turning a blind eye. Then you want to talk about there's no white privilege. It's not about money. It's not about wealth. It's about fairness and equality. And if, and if two people do the same crime, it shouldn't matter what race it is. If you have the same background, if you have the same crime, why is Kyle getting a, a, a lighter sentence when Jamal is getting a harder one? Why isn't Jamal getting mental health? Why is, why is it that every time a mass shooting happens with a white man, he either shoots himself or he's a good guy with a gun that just had some mental troubles? He was troubled. He was troubled. And these people can kill multiple people, but if it's a black person that kills another black person, no, oh, you shouldn't be killing each other. What about the Chinese and, and against the Chinese, the, the Hispanic against the Hispanic? What about the white versus the white? Y'all just only want to look at the black flaws and not look at the flaws of us all, the humanity flaws. And to me, it's, it's, deeper, than, um, it's deeper than the race. Although the race is a driving factor, there's so many other factors that play into this. And that's why I'm a big advocate against let's just segregate ourselves. And it could be also because I'm biased. I was raised in a multicultural, um, predominantly white still, but there was a lot of different cultures that I was raised uh, around. And to see that, to, to behold that is something so beautiful. So for me to alienate 
uh, from each culture, it seems like you are robbing yourself truly of the joy that you could have by witnessing how other people live life, how other people experience each other, how other people worship the Lord. Like, it's just, it's something about that, that, that to me is a prime reason why you should honor your own culture. You should love your own culture. You should build and, and um, feed into your own culture, but you should also really look at these other cultures around you and find love and respect for them too. You don't have to cook rice the same. You don't have to speak the same language to appreciate the beauty that is another culture. Um, I'm trying to figure out how we can be this melting pot that they said that we were in New York and all of that good stuff. I hope you guys get what I'm saying. I don't want to rant forever. I don't want to speak uh, too, too passionately, too much into things that people are not ready to hear um, because I think this is like a slow, like J. Cole said, you have to feed uh, and be patient with children. And I'm not saying you guys are children, but like as you're educating, you're just kind of having that that temperament of like, this is someone that I'm, I'm trying to build character into people. And I don't want to like downcast anyone. I don't want to like alienate anyone. I just want us to all grow an understanding and awaken. Um, I don't want people to be half woke. I want them to be fully woke. Um, I want us to transcend into this new plane of existence where we truly understand the gift that life is. and we all are afforded the same opportunity so that way there is not this animosity this hostility this us versus them them versus me mentality anymore it's it's us together it's compassion all the way and that's why I try to lead my life as the life of compassion and um, that's why I keep telling you guys I'm praying for a Saul to Paul moment where um, all this radical and hateful thinking there's something that happens that's, that shakes them up and they say, you know what? I'm Paul now. The Lord didn't change my name. He signed me up for that Christian Jubilee and he wrote my name on the roll because I've been changed since the Lord has lifted me. I want to be ready when Jesus comes because we're in those times now. And I don't want to say, oh, this is the last days, this is the last days, but I do feel like we're in the last days of whatever we were doing before. Whatever way we were existing before, and now we're headed into a new way. Um, and I'm excited kind of to be uh, part of that narrative and, and ushering in people to have these different conversations. I would really love, there's a couple of people that I've been talking to um, offline that I'm just like, man, we got to get them on the podcast because their thinking is impeccable, immaculate, and they're so woke. They're so awakened and they're younger than me, but it's just like, man, you're my mentor now. I'm just going to let you know right on the spot. You're my mentor. People need to hear what you have to say. I have kind of a platform, not very big, but it's going to grow. I have faith and I believe uh, that we can go places. But anyway, I said all that to say, um, I'm changing. I'm still growing. I'm still learning. I've really been excited. I'll, I'll share a link with you guys about this this channel that I've been following, it's called uh, Ronald Martin. Yeah, Ronald Martin or something like that, uh, unfiltered. And it just has so many beautiful black experts um, that are awakening me. And I'm like, wow, this is so cool. And it's not like in a way that's like, oh, I'm so mad. Uh, it's like, whoa, like I never even knew the power that we had as black people because it's been so hidden from us history is for the victors, the written by the victors. And so as I'm learning these histories, as I'm as I'm expanding my knowledge, I'm here to expand you guys' knowledge as well. And on that note, uh, be real. Be you. Do what you came here to do and be the light in this world that you want to see. Peace. <laughs>